CataractCoach.com, which viscoelastic should you use for the IOL injector? A dispersive or a cohesive? We know at the beginning of the case we're using a dispersive viscoelastic to protect the corneal endothelium. This agent's thinner and tends to adhere better and stay in place during phaco to protect the corneal endothelium. So we'll make our main incision here. It does keep the anterior chamber inflated during capsulorexis creation. In this situation, a cohesive, in some cases, could be a little bit of a better agent to even deepen the anterior chamber further, but for most surgeons, I think a dispersive viscoelastic is perfectly sufficient here. Now, the agents are different. A dispersive is a thinner agent. Think of it like honey or molasses. It's more liquid than it is solid, and it can coat things very well. In fact, most manufacturers use the word coat in the name of the viscoelastic agent to help you remember. A cohesive agent is thicker. Think of it as jelly or jam. It's more solid than it is liquid. And that tends to stay together, hence the name cohesive. It doesn't coat things as well. Now dispersive stays in the eye a lot, stays very well. So during phaco, we can do all these maneuvers. Here I'm bringing the nucleus out of the capsule bag. We'll chop it, we'll use high flow, 40 cc's a minute and yet we still have that agent protecting the corneal endothelium. If we use a cohesive agent, it's easily washed out of the eye. And so different parts of the procedure tend to call for different agents. This is why most surgeons here in the US tend to use two viscoelastics per surgery, a cohesive and then a dispersive and used at different points during the procedure. Now some surgeons are only using one agent, just a single agent, usually a dispersive agent throughout the whole surgery, and that's certainly possible as well. We're gonna finish up this case here. The nucleus is already out. We're gonna do some cortex removal. This case, as you can see, is proceeding very efficiently. This is that flip and chop technique where the nucleus was flipped out of the capsule bag and then chopped relatively quickly, and it can be emulsified quite easily. So for the injector, I tend to use a dispersive agent because the advantage of the dispersive for the injector is it lubricates better. It's a better agent for lubricating the injector. But the catch is it's a little tougher to remove at the end of the case. It tends to adhere to the eyewall surface. So you have to be more diligent in removing that. So now with an empty capsule bag, here comes our cohesive viscoelastic filling the capsule bag. This is one that's more solid than it is liquid. That's the cohesive. Now we'll get the IOL. It's already been loaded into the injector. It's been loaded with a dispersive agent to coat the lens. And you can see the outline of the dispersive agent as it goes inside the eye, which is already filled with the cohesive. And in this case, we ended up having some air bubbles in the dispersive, and that makes it very easy to see during the step of the procedure. And that's why I chose this for the video. You see, the air bubbles that were in the dispersive can highlight that we still have dispersive agent covering the front and back surface of the IOL. Now I'll definitely go behind the IOL to remove the dispersive agent. I do that on every case. If, however, you don't go behind the IOL, then you may be better off using a cohesive viscoelastic to, to load the lens into the injector because that'll be removed easier and maybe have less tendency for this IOL to rotate, especially important if it's a toric lens. So if you're going behind the IOL like I am, you can use a dispersive agent because that will lubricate the injector better. But again, you have to be very diligent like I'm doing here in removing all of that agent from the eye. So here we'll clear out all the viscoelastic. You'll notice that the dispersive that had the bubbles in it is by and large gone. I don't see any remaining uh, little air bubbles and no evidence of remaining dispersive or cohesive viscoelastic. So again, up to the surgeon, surgeon's choice. For the IOL injector, you can either use a dispersive agent like me, just be very careful to remove all of it at the end of the procedure, especially behind the lens, or use a cohesive, and that'll be a lot easier to remove. Thanks for watching.